I'm Dr. Stephen Perlman, and I'll be describing rhinoplasty in less than 10 minutes. This is the open approach. We begin with the marginal incision. This is the lower edge of the lower lateral cartilages. These are the tip cartilages. This is actually the same incision I use for an endonasal or closed rhinoplasty. Only when I connect across the bottom of the nose with that inverted V incision you see with the marker that it becomes an open rhinoplasty incision. The scissor elevates the skin from the cartilage to prevent cartilage damage. We then elevate the skin, separating from the cartilage below, leaving a nice covering of thick skin and perichondrium above. When the cartilage is fully exposed, I use an elevator to separate the skin and periosteum, which is covering the bone, to unmask the nasal bones above. This gives us an entire access to the nose. You can now see the upper third of the nose, middle third of the nose, as well as nasal tip cartilages. Next, we reduce the hump. Here, I'm using a rasp, which is actually a nasal bone file. Sometimes we use an acetone, another technique. The tip cartilages are now divided in the midline. They are paired cartilages that usually match. I use these sutures to divide them and retract them so they give, not, give nice access to the septum. The septum is the dividing wall in the middle of the nose. I'm sure you've heard of a crooked, de uh, crooked septum or deviated septum. Well, I'm going to access the septum to both straighten out her deviated septum, as well as harvest cartilage from the septum to use for grafting. I elevate the cartilage from the overlying layer called the perichondrium. I'm using this elevator to, to elevate it. When you look inside, the cartilage to our right and the layer called the perichondrium and the skin called mucosa to our left. In the back is a septal bone. Next, we reduce the hump using the cartilaginous area by reducing the cartilage of the upper lateral cartilages. And this is the, car the cartilage in the middle called the dorsal septum. This will create a nice straight profile. We've already reduced the hump. Now we've reduced the cartilage below. Septal cartilage is harvested, leaving a one centimeter strut in the bottom. That's a one centimeter width at the bottom, as you can see there, and above one centimeter as well. The rest of the cartilage can be removed, which both alleviates the crooked septum, as well as giving me nice cartilage for grafts. This is the cartilage I'll be using for my grafting later. Now I'm measuring for grafts called spreader grafts. Spreader grafts are very useful and used in almost all rhinoplasties. They support the middle vault of the nose, prevent excess narrowing, support the airway, can straighten the nose, as well as giving a nice strong profile. The cartilage now divided up. I can use this for two spreader grafts, which is to support the middle vault of the nose. Two ALS strut grafts, because her tip cartilage will be narrowed, but need to be flattened and straightened and supported. So that gives us four grafts. And one more graft called the columella strut. That will support the tip. You'll see all these placed later. The spreader grafts are now placed in precise pockets, one on either side of the septum. You can see how nice and strong and straight these are. This is the best cartilage for spreader grafts. The spreader grafts are now fixed to the patient's septum using these needles. This holds it in place for me to place my sutures. Now I place a suture called the horizontal mattress suture to help straighten and strengthen the middle vault of the nose. Here you're seeing placement of the sutures. These grafts are excellent in straightening out crooked noses, as well as I said, supporting a narrow nose. These sutures dis dissolve in about 90 days. They don't need to be permanent. They create significant scar tissue so that this will help keep everything in place. Now the upper lateral cartilages, which is the middle third of the nose, are fixed the complex of spreader grafts and septum. That creates five layers. Upper lateral cartilage on the outside, two spreader grafts, and the septum. Now I see a nice, straight middle vault. Good strength and good support. Looking from the side, we can see the hump that we reduced, and the cartilage is also reduced. As a matter of fact, the nasal hump is actually one-third cartilage and two-thirds bone. We're now marking the tip or the domes. This is the highlight of the tip cartilages. These are going to be reduced in bulk by removing the top three or four millimeters. This helps to narrow the tip cartilages. This is called cephalic 
resection or cephalic trim of lower lateral cartilages. Next, because the tip sticks out too far, which is called over projection, we're going to cut and overlap this middle portion. This brings the entire horseshoe of the tip cartilage downward. Here I'm suturing it to reconstitute it to make a lower tip. If you look at that cartilage on your left side, which is the patient's right, it's sitting much higher than on the left side, which is our deep projection. Now we're using sutures to narrow the dome or the tip cartilage on the left side makes it nice and flat and narrow. This gives us a, good, a strong, straight, flat, yet narrow nasal tip. This is again using the absorbable suture. This is an ALR strut graft. In order to support that cartilage of the tip called the lower lateral cartilage, that strut graft gives strength and support and helps to flatten that cartilage. So we have strong cartilages, yet straight cartilages. Now you're seeing the medial crural overlay to reduce the right nasal tip. Here, they have now been unified. The domes are at the exact same heights, and this is called a cephalic intradomal suture. This intradomal suture is placed to unify the tips at their apex. The ideal nasal tip is triangular in shape, and when we're finished, when we're finished placing the suture, you'll see we have a nice triangular nasal tip. Here, I'm placing this precisely so they enter and exit the same exact point in each of the nasal tips. As you can see, I have a nice, beautiful, triangular tip. The tip should, slay, should splay slightly outward down below, which is more natural than squishing it together. Next, a cardiomelar strut is placed. This strut is placed between the lower lateral cartilage called the medial cura. This helps strengthen the nasal tip, helps set the tip projection, which is how far the tip supports and tip sticks out from the face. I'm examining the amount of support I've reestablished. We now have a nice, firm, straight tip, a straight profile with a slight break above the tip called a super tip break, and the precise tip projection I'm looking for. Projection, again, is how far the tip sticks out from the face. I'm examining the tip for the proper shape. Lastly, because the patient has thin skin, we take a small amount of cartilage that's been crushed. So it damages it, and I stitch it over on top of these uh, tip cartilages called the domes, this will give us a nice, thin cushion. Most of this cartilage goes away and leaves a fibrous layer of thin tissue that will cushion the tip. Lastly, we do the nasal infracture called osteotomies. This is the quote-unquote breaking of the nose. It's a gentle tapping mechanism with a very, very fine chisel and a hammer. And this is how we narrow our nasal bones. Whenever you reduce the nasal hump, it leaves an open roof. You remove, you remove the top, leaving an open pyramid, and these osteotomies will serve to both close the roof as well as narrow the nasal bones. After doing this, I hold pressure for about three minutes. This helps reduce black and blue eyes under the, uh, black and blue under the lower eyelids. Here we see our profile on the table. Above is the patient preoperatively. Below is how she looks immediately after surgery. From below, you can see we've straightened out the septum. The bottom of the septum, which is the midline, is very crooked. In the front, we've reduced those big, round, bulbous nasal tips. We've improved the profile. Here's a patient seen approximately four months post-op. Profile, three-quarter view. Her other profile, plus smiling. Smiling pulls the nose down before, but after it doesn't, the nose stays static. Again, you want to look at every view possible a more gentle curve of the tip to the dorsum, which is a nice parallel side lines. Thank you.